any chance we get to take a look at the creative process and peel back that curtain and glimpse behind it and see how a work of art gets created is, is, is really glorious. And that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. We're going to take a look at one of the most influential songs in popular music, Strawberry Fields Forever. We're going to take a trip, that's safe for the kids, back to 1966 to take a look at how John Lennon created the song, what inspired him, and how it got produced in the studio. And it's a really fascinating story. If you don't know it, you're gonna have a lot of fun. And even if you do know it, you're gonna hear a lot of cool things along the way. When you talk about a great album, you can't really separate the circumstances in which it was created from the music. We're gonna be talking a little bit about both tonight. And uh, hopefully you'll see that this mixture of the fun that they had while making the album, and also the tension in which it was made, created this, this masterpiece. He's probably the only person to have sold out Carnegie Hall and been a finalist for the Erston Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award as well. Uh, he's an extremely unusual, unusual guy with very, very sort of wide talents. So that's definitive proof that Paul McCartney could write a lousy song. <laughs> and he's the creator of this whole Deconstructing the Beatles series, which is this series of very sort of unique multimedia presentations about the production techniques and songwriting of the Beatles. Now, by the time Lady Madonna was released, the Beatles were on their way to Rishikesh. Rishikesh is an area in India, which means land of the sages. Now, there was a lot of revolution going on in the world in 1968. There was the Prague Spring, where Russia came in to Czechoslovakia. There were the protests at the 68 Democratic Convention in Chicago. The Vietnam War was raging. There was the assassination of Martin Luther King, and during the White Album, the assassination of Robert Kennedy. And this was just the tip of the iceberg as far as the world really changing. Right, so I was thinking yeah. of the sounds as being something which... A little bit of brass band. We bring in a second tape recorder and a fresh piece of tape. We press play on the first recorder and record on the second, and we actually mix some tracks together. So for example, the drums and bass get combined on track one, the guitar and vocal get combined on track four, and now we have two empty tracks on this new piece of tape to add some percussion and background harmony and what have you. So if you read about Blackbird in most Beatles books, uh, they'll tell you that it's Paul on guitar with a metronome. But if it's a metronome, it is the worst metronome ever built because it can't keep time. Well, as you can see here, it's actually not a metronome. It's him tapping his foot, which Jeff Emmerich mic'd with its own microphone. So if you look at take four, you see there's one track of just Paul's foot, one on the guitar, and then a vocal and a room microphone to get some ambiance from the room, later replaced with a second vocal.